Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Tuesday morning call. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we are here to provide leadership, to provide value. I'm always bringing in an amazing guest, you know, to interview. Sometimes that's a top performing originator who's just crushing it in the marketplace. And sometimes it's an author, a speaker, a leader. And sometimes I'm lucky enough that it's, it's all of those and it's also a good personal friend. So uh, Daniel Harkavy, welcome to the call, my friend. Dave Savage, it is so good to be back with you and all of those that are with us today. It's a privilege. Thanks. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say and uh, looking forward to rereading your book. I've gone through it in preparation for the call, but uh, I need to read it even deeper because it's, it's pretty important stuff, brother, and congratulations on your new book. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to bring you in and hand it off to you in just a minute. I do want to remind everybody that the, the Mortgage Coach team has launched a new website. We're really proud of it. Uh, we created this internally all the way. Uh, our designers that create our great mobile apps and our great interfaces and all of our marketing created every single inch of this website. So hopefully you as a, as a community love it. Part of our goal when creating it was not just to have a great marketing website to capture leads and demos and sell mortgage coach, which by the way, those are important things, but uh, we want to make it valuable for you guys. We want to make it valuable for our members so you can use it as a way to log in to all of our, our platforms and tools. And our calendar is something that I particularly love that is just this living, breathing place where every time we book a new guest, we update it. Uh, obviously today is Daniel Harkavy. Hopefully that's not a surprise for anybody. And hopefully you're referencing that website. And if you're a, a manager and leader on this call, hopefully you're building some of your training and your sales meetings around this content. Uh, next week, I've got two amazing guests. We're going to do a special call with Tom Ferry. So outside of our normal rhythm, we're going to have a Wednesday call with Tom. Um, in our normal rhythm of Tuesday interviews, we're going to have Garth Graham, which I'll do a more formal introduction uh, before that call, but a pretty amazing leader in our industry. So don't miss next week's call. Do want to remind everybody that these calls are recorded and available on our YouTube channel, and we encourage you to share them with your team. And when there's a call like the one that we're going to do today, I, I encourage you to share it with your partners. You know, this is going to be a call that's going to be important to you personally, and it's going to be great leadership for everybody. I mean, it's I wouldn't be surprised if it's the kind of thing you want to share with your family. So, so Daniel, I don't know that you need a, a tremendous amount of introduction because I've interviewed you so much, and your coaching organization, Building Champions, is, you know, I think it's, it's ubiquitous with leadership. It's ubiquitous with executive coaching, and um, you guys are the best. You have the highest level of integrity, and you're also just great personal friends of mine and personal friends of Mortgage Coach. So I'm going to really hand it off to you and let you uh, – Tell the mortgage coach community what you think is important. Awesome, buddy. Well, thank you for your very kind words. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it is great to be back with uh, you and all of those that you folks serve. Um, I am very excited about uh, today's topic, and uh, it's some of my newest thinking on success. Uh, Dave, you and I started our company uh, just about 20 years ago. We're celebrating our 20-year anniversary this month, and uh, that's an exciting, exciting uh, benchmark. You know, 20 years in, in business is amazing, but I think what makes it so amazing for me is that I now have 20 years' worth of stories um, as a result of having the opportunity to walk side-by-side side with so many wonderful leaders so many amazing people in the mortgage banking industry and now so many amazing people in all industries and um, this 20 year anniversary for us um, is extra special because uh, just uh, last week I released a book that I co-authored with a client of mine, Michael Hyatt, and it's called Living Forward, A Proven Plan to Stop Drifting and Get the Life You Want. And it's the content of that book um, that I want to share today. And Dave, I think you're 100% spot on. My hope is that the content that I'm going to be sharing with you today, the message, uh, some of the concepts that we discussed today, um, I think that if you're listening and you're all in, um, 
I think this is the type of call that you're going to want to share with your partners and you're going to want to share with your family. I completely, completely agree. So here we are in March. We're, we're coming um, hot and, and fast into the end of Q1, which is mind-blowing. Many of you made some resolutions uh, towards the end of the year for January 1. Just about every single one of you created goals for 2016. Uh, many of you created not just goals for your business, but also for your life. And we are just about 90, you know, we're, we're going to be staring at the 90-day mark in the weeks ahead. And I want to talk to you about something that is much bigger than just goal setting or resolutions. So I, I, I want to just clear that away. This call is not about goal setting. It's not about resolutions. This call is about success in life. It's about your life big picture, long term, it's about how you lead yourself. And that's because I believe every one of you are influencers and leaders, and every one of you um, are sitting on a platform, you're sitting center stage, and everyone around you is looking at you, and they're, they're taking cues off of you, and they're making decisions about how and what level of engagement they're going to, to give to you, and this is true for you loan officers, it's true for branch managers, regionals, and executives. We are leading our teams, our partners, our customers, our communities, our families, we're leading. And this industry attracts leaders. Every single one of you are influencers. And, and the beauty of the industry is that there is so much upside when it comes to the impact that we can have, so much upside when it comes to the difference you can make. And then all of that gets set in this framework of so much upside that you can experience economically. And all of those beautiful things lead to not just great opportunity, but they lead to great challenges. So in my book, Living Forward, I talk about that. But before I get into Living Forward, I want to talk about something that I'm equally as passionate about, which is surfing. And for the last four decades or so, I have been an absolute saltwater addict and I, I want to share some of this with you because I think that uh, there's a message in surfing that is very relevant for life. In surfing, the type of experience that I have when I'm surfing is greatly dependent upon a whole bunch of different factors. Um, it's going to depend on swell direction. It's going to depend on the topography, the bottom of the ocean, whether it's coral reef, rock reef, sandbar, sand bottom. It's going to depend on wind conditions. It's going to depend on time of year, um, water temperature. All the pictures that you're seeing there, of course, are warmer waters. Uh, the Maldives, Mexico with my boys. I've spent years and years in the water. And one of the things that takes place is when I surf today, having the opportunity just a few years to go work with, to work with professional coaches, um, one of the things that I'm hyper-focused uh, on is a landmark uh, that I can that I can zero in on when I'm in the ocean. Even before I get into the water, I'm looking for that perfect spot. Depending upon where I'm sitting in the ocean will determine what type of an experience that I have. And now having done this for four decades, um, I have a lot more water knowledge than I did back when I was a teenager. So oftentimes in surfing, you can have five guys go out into the water, five gals go out into the water, one will have an amazing experience, two or three will have an okay experience, and a couple will have a terrible experience. And it all has to do with where they're at. So I, I want to connect to a, a story that takes place. This is Pacific City up here in the Pacific Northwest. A few years ago, I was out surfing with my son, one of my sons, and a couple younger friends. And the conditions were fantastic. It was a, a fall day. The surf was a bit large. Uh, it was a, a, a maybe a bit more intimidating um, than uh, a calm summer day. And a few of us paddled out, and we paddled out up against that point, up against the Cape. And what was taking place there was there was a very strong rip. And that rip tide or current was pulling so strong that one of the younger surfers that was with us, a young friend who had not surfed this spot before, who was newer to the sport, he um, found himself in this rip and wasn't even aware of it. He wasn't aware of the fact that he was moving at a very fast clip from that little cave that you see over to the right, way out towards the point. By the time he realized it, that he was being sucked out to sea, it was uh, a bit scary for him. 
So this big strong friend of mine, he starts paddling straight in and he's paddling in as hard as he can, but he's not making any, any ground. So he's paddling up against this drift, he's caught in it, unaware of it, up until the point where he's now in harm's way. So I paddled into the rip, I paddled out to him, and he and I started heading south. And as we paddled south to get out of that rip, we made our way out of the current and into calmer waters. We paddled all the way in to the beach, made it there maybe 30, 45 minutes later, completely exhausted. He was stuck in the drift, heading towards some significant risk, and wasn't aware of it until it was too late. All right, so here I am now serving as CEO and executive coach for Building Champions for two decades, 20 years, having coached thousands of leaders from the mortgage banking industry, the petroleum industry, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, trucking, you name it. We've been in all sorts of industries, and today we're coaching more than 500 leaders in all sorts of different businesses. And what I've seen over and over again is that so many of us experience pain or danger when I'm in a coaching session that's difficult, it's because somebody's got, gotten caught in the drift. They've been sucked out to a point in life that they had not set their eyes on. It wasn't a desired goal. It wasn't a desired outcome. So us coaches, we talk about it here. What makes for a difficult day for us is not a day where we're working with the leader where their strategy went bad, where they failed to execute on time, uh, you know, where they uh, didn't have the appropriate resources uh, to deliver as pr promised. Those aren't the difficult coaching days. The difficult coaching days are when you're helping an executive who's dealing with problems that really impact them between the hours of 5 and 9, not 9 and 5. The drift has taken them so far off course, they're now dealing with some significant health issues. They're dealing with marriage failure. They're dealing with some very estranged relationships with teenage kids or ad young adult kids. They're dealing with maybe some financial challenges due to really neglect. They've been stuck in this drift and they're waking up with some all of a sudden alarm bell ringing saying something's broken. So what I want to talk to you about today is how does this happen and then how do we live with more intentionality so that we can live with more um, with, with greater results and, and accomplish more success in all areas of our life. Because this is what I know. All of you are hard charging. All of you are incredibly talented. All of you have big goals and ambitions. Every one of you want to be successful. You want to be successful in every area of your life. And the truth be told, there's not enough time in your day for you to get it all done. None of you have a big, abundant gap of opportunity in the form of time. All of you have compressed days, compressed schedules. There's not enough to get it all done. So what causes us to get stuck in the drift? And I'm going to tell you that I think there's four primary causes of the drift. The first being that we're unaware. My young friend was unaware of that rip current. He was unaware that he was in it. And for us in life, sometimes we're unaware of the fact that we can be in a lot more control than we believe. We're unaware of the fact that we can make more intentional decisions. Oftentimes it has to do with how we were raised. Oftentimes we weren't raised to think about really gaining clarity around who you want to become in all areas of your life and then taking the appropriate actions. We're just unaware of it. So we drift along. And in this culture today, especially with all of the technology and all the accessibility, accessibility we can be completely unaware of how far off we are um, from a desired destination how far off course we are because of the drift, so we're unaware. The second is that we're overwhelmed, and I can tell you over the years I've seen the state of being overwhelmed growing. We're overwhelmed, we're heads down, we're barely making it through our day, we're so um, caught up in our businesses and, and trying to get it all done, and for some of you who have you know, maybe young kids or, or teenage kids, um, and spouses, you're not just overwhelmed with just the sheer demand from business, but also the soccer games and the gymnastic practice and the dance uh, performances and the community involvement. And you're so overwhelmed, so hyper-focused on just making it through the day that you don't even realize how far off course you're getting with regards to how you're caring for your health 
or how you're caring for your spouse or how you're really connecting at a heart level with your kids or how you're really connecting with your teammates as leaders or your clients and you're losing ground, you're stuck in the drift, you're off course. The next cause is that you're distracted. You're so hyper-focused on one or two areas of your life and putting all of your energy and emphasis into these one or two areas of your life, completely distracted, not seeing what's taking place around you. So you think everything's going well because you're seeing great results in your business or you're seeing great results in your portfolio or you're seeing great results in your health, but you're not really seeing what's taking place with the other accounts in your life that are important. You're not aware of the fact that you might have a deficit account with your 8-year-old or your 11-year-old or your 15-year-old or maybe you're, you're distracted. You're not really aware of the fact that you're not present when you're having conversations with people you care about. You're distracted, your eyes down, you're looking at your, your iPhone, you're looking at Facebook and email when you're trying to have conversations with people that matter more. And I've seen this over and over again and when that happens I'm telling you consequences of the drift can be brutal but before we get to consequences I want to talk about the fourth and final reason for this drift happening and that is that we're deceived. We think that we'll get to what's most important as soon as we get through this really good one run, as soon as we get this project done. You know, for, for many of us last year, it was as soon as we get through TRID, as soon as we get that done, it's as soon as we get our new assistant onboarded, it's as soon as we get this marketing campaign launched. We're deceived in thinking that there's a guarantee of tomorrow. We're deceived in thinking that we'll start to change our thinking and our behavior tomorrow. The truth of the matter is, for many, Success begets success. So if you're successful today, all you're going to create is more opportunity tomorrow. You're not going to have more bandwidth tomorrow. You know, Dave, you've, you've seen me since I was 30 years old. Today I'm 51. I'm not seeing my opportunities waning. I'm not seeing it today uh, to where all of a sudden life is giving me all sorts of more time and more uh, you know, space. I'm having to fight for it because when you do something for so many years and if you guys do it well, like all or most of you are, are doing and all of you are aspiring for, if you do it really well, you're going to see that you become more sought out. And the truth is, you're going to easily get stuck in the drift if you think that you can take care of what matters most tomorrow. You might also be deceived thinking that this is just the way it is. You know, I've talked to some folks who are really gifted leaders, but their belief system's broken. They're deceived in thinking that they're victim. They're deceived in thinking that they don't have the power to make new decisions, to change habits, to get better outcomes in their marriages, to get better outcomes in their business, to grow in their careers. They, they feel powerless, and it's because you're deceived. And so much of it has to do with our belief system, and our belief system is directly impacted by our perspectives and our thinking. So oftentimes, because we're overwhelmed, because we're stuck in the drift, we just don't see success, business, and life as we should. We need some new perspective. If we're stuck in the drift, there are painful, painful consequences. And I see it all the time. When, um, when your head's down, stuck in the drift, and you can't see um, everything that's going on, you can't see how to improve your health, you can't see um, where you'd like to wind up in your marriage. You can't see where you'd like to wind up from a financial perspective at some point in the future. If you're stuck in that drift, it can lead to confusion. It can be incredibly expensive. It can be expensive not just with money but in time. There are so many of us that will look back on our years and if we will take a true accounting of time and things that we chased, we will see that we wasted a whole bunch of a resource, a whole bunch of, of a, a resource that's finite, and that's time. We've wasted it. We've spent it. It's gone. And we're not seeing the ROI that we would like. There's a lost opportunity. If we are not aware of what success looks like in all areas of our life, then we're missing opportunities today to invest and to experience what we might want with our kids, with our health. Uh, with our marriages, with our faith, with our careers, all the different areas that truly define success for us. And, and if that's taking place, oftentimes in a tough coaching session, we're talking through pain. There's pain in it. 
you know, I, I, I can tell you, I, I, could, I could take hours, Dave, of just talking about pain that clients have experienced because they were stuck in the drift. It's pain in dealing with attorneys. It's pain dealing with counselors. It's pain dealing with medications that are now required because we weren't proactive with how we cared for ourselves. It's pain because we missed opportunities with our careers. We didn't take the right risks. And I think the worst of all is regret. The, the worst consequence of the drift is regret. And here's, here's what happens. Now 20 years into doing this, a difficult coaching session is when I'm speaking to an incredibly successful leader who's in his 50s, 60s, or 70s. And what's eating at this guy or gal most is that they missed opportunity to be who they wanted to be in other areas of their life because they put so much focus on their careers, so much focus on climbing the ladder, that they missed amazing years with their spouses, with their kids, or to take care of themselves. Two weeks ago, I was with a group of 5,000 leaders in Florida. Two guys were speaking. One was the former CEO of Walmart. The other uh, of uh, uh, Synovus, and both of these guys in their late 60s and mid 70s, both of them leading these massive powerhouse organizations, both of them addressing the question of what is most important for this room of 5,000 leaders to hear about leadership. And both of these guys said, man, lead yourself well, lead yourself well. One of the individuals said one of the most painful things I've had to do in my life was I had to go back to my adult children and to ask them for forgiveness because I truly neglected them for every bit of their lives where they lived in our home. I neglected them. I gave them leftovers. And this leader said it was the most painful part of his life. Absolute regret. Now, in a healthy family, you can get forgiveness, but you don't get that opportunity back. And if we don't clearly see how we want to live life, how we want to lead ourselves, it will cause us to not be who we could be in our careers and in life. So let's talk about how do we move out of that chaos, that drift, that overwhelmed state, the consequences of pain, of regret, of kind of that manic um, uh, reaction to life, and how do we bring a more proactive, more present, more intentional way to life. All of you plan. Every single one of you plan. Now, to what degree you plan and how successful you are at planning, that's going to be uh, responses that are going to be across the board. Some of you are master planners and others are successful by just kind of planning out and knowing what two or three things are most important in the day, in our days. But I'll tell you, if we were to talk about your vacations, you plan those. I guarantee you every single one of you put some sort of a plan together for your vacation. You invest time into thinking about the key destinations, the key events. You invest time into putting together the how you're going to get there, where you're going to stay, a couple of the key things you're going to do. You all spend time investing in a plan for a vacation. The average American will invest five hours into planning for a car purchase. What kind of a car, researching it, five hours is invested into what type of a decision we'll make with what we'll drive. It's going to smell lovely for a few months, and then we go into maintenance mode. Five hours. The average bride spends 39 days, 39 days into planning her wedding. 39 days invested into planning an event that in a period of four or five hours is over. Yet how many hours do we invest in putting a plan together for how we want to succeed in life? And in my book, Living Forward, it uncovers this plan, this life planning process that I really believe is a GPS for our life. And, and what it does is it helps you to intentionally put together a plan that will move you from where you are today to where you want to go in every area of your life. What kind of health do you want to have when you're 65 or 70? What kind of shape do you want to be in? What kind of energy do you want to have? 
what kind of uh, faith journey do you want to have? What kind of marriage do you want to have? What kind of a friend do you want to be? What kind of a sibling? What kind of parent or grandparent? And then what kind of a professional do you want to be? A GPS, if we don't take the time to think about where we're going, we're going to react to the drift. We're going to go through life making decisions that are completely reactive, not proactive, not intentional instead of intentional, and we just kind of cruise through. And you know, for some that's a okay, but I'll tell you what, I know that for those of you who are on this call with Dave and Mortgage Coach, every one of you are striving to be the best you can be. You would not be investing in the type of technology that Mortgage Coach brings to you if you did not want to be the best. That's who Mortgage Coach attracts. So you want to be the best, not just in business but in life, but have you defined what being the best or success looks like? So in Living Forward, I will walk you through uh, how life planning answers three critical questions. And the first one I think is the most important, and that is how do I want to be remembered? I want you to fast forward to some point in the future, and I want you to identify how do you want to be remembered? Because the reality of it is each and every one of us are here for a limited number of days. And many of us are deceived, as I talked about earlier, thinking that we can make the greatest impact in the lives of those who matter most later, after hours. And the truth is that many of us are going through our days giving our best, our leftovers. We're not giving our best to our best. We're not caring for ourselves that are in ways that are enabling us to have maximum energy in all areas of our life so that we can best serve others, so that we can best lead, so that we can best add value. So the first question, how do I want to be remembered, leads to the next question, which is what matters most? <clears throat> Very rarely. In this busy culture, will people take time to sit down and think about what in life matters most? 22 years ago or so, when I left my career in mortgage banking, I left um, and took a one-year sabbatical before I started this company. And the reason for it was I wanted to help people figure out what mattered most. That was my style of of coaching. When I wrote Becoming a Coaching Leader years ago, that was the result of me wanting to help people to figure out what matters most and then how to help them to get there. How to help people to succeed in all areas of your life. Your life plan answers that question second. And then the third is how do I get from here to where I want to be? There's specific steps that I want you to, to understand you can take on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually basis that will enable you to accumulate net worth in all areas of your life. Not just your financial, not just your professional, but there's things you can do whether you feel like it or not because you make a decision, because you're clear on where you're going. You're clear on what matters most. You're clear on how you want to be remembered. Now you've got some not just cerebral horsepower going, but you've got some heart horsepower going. You've got conviction. And when you when you answer those three questions, you can then begin to conquer some of the hurdles that are holding you back in areas of your life that are most important. You might be wildly successful in one, two, three areas of your life, but what you're after is you want to be successful in all areas of your life. So once you've gone through the process, what you'll realize is that each and every day you can go through life with more clarity. I think it's one of the greatest benefits to having a plan for your life. I am now more than 20 years into this whole life planning process. I keep every single one of them. And as I look back on my life plans that are here to serve me, I don't serve them, I see with absolute clarity how I wanted to fill my days, where I was headed, and then what it is I should be saying yes to and no to. It gives me clarity around the decisions I make. Now, I want you to hear me on this. All the little decisions that you make or don't make each and every day, when those things are weaved together, those things are going to tell the story of your life. So we want clarity in our decision making. Not only do we want clarity, we want confidence because we thought about how we want to be remembered. We thought about what matters most. We're clear on priorities. We're clear on what steps to take on a daily or weekly basis. So now we have confidence so that each and every day we can fill our days with more of the right things. 
we know what's truly most important. A few years ago, Dave had me on the call, thank you very much, and we talked a, a bit about um, what I was learning from my friend Dr. Henry Cloud. We talked about all the brain science that goes behind a process like life planning. When you're clear on what matters most and you identify the specific steps and you connect those to a long-term vision, and you repeat, repeat, repeat the reviews of, repeat, repeat, repeat the execution of, you start to develop some mental horsepower and mental muscle, mental strength to continue to transform and evolve yourself. You then have confidence, and that confidence breeds more confidence. And ultimately, what that leads to is courage. And here's why courage is required today. All of us need courage to say no. Peeps, we got to say no more. We have to say no more. We have to say no not to bad things. You're all really good at saying no to bad things, but we need the courage to say no to good things in order, so, in order for us to say yes to the great things. There are too many things in life for us to invest our time into. And if we go through this process, if we identify what's most important, and how we're going to go from where we are today to where we want to go at some point in the future, we now have courage to say no. There's a huge kind of myth with regards to life balance. I can't tell you how many times over the past two, te two decades I've had clients say, hey, I want more work-life balance. And I, and I don't think that's what people really want. I don't think people are looking for, hey, give me seven hours at work so I can have seven hours here. I'm looking for equality in the amount of time I invest in all areas of our life. That's not what people are after. I think what we're all after is not equal but appropriate. We're looking for the ability to invest the appropriate amount of time in all the areas of our life that are truly most important to us. Because here's what's happening for the majority of Americans today. The majority of Americans today are hyper-focusing on their careers, hyper-focusing on, on their finances, and some hyper-focusing on maybe one or two other accounts in their life. Maybe it's their health, or maybe it's little Johnny, or whatever it may be. And they're hyper-focusing on a few of these things. And as a result of that, they're not present in the other areas of their life. And I think that's what we want. I think we want to give the appropriate amount of time to all the areas of our life and we want to be present when we're there. All right, now I want to, I want to bring this to a business um, application. So many times we do not crank on all eight cylinders at work because we're not present. We're not present in meetings. We're not present in one-on-ones. We're not present in selling opportunities. We're not present when we're having our de debriefs with our processors or with our assistants. We're not present. And the reason we're not present is because our busy minds are thinking about what we didn't get done or what we need to get done. And as a result of that, not being present, we don't make the best decisions and we lack influence. And decision making and influence, those are the two things that are going to determine what kind of success we have as business professionals, as leaders. The decisions we make and the influence we have. But if we're not present, our influence drops, our decision making drops, and therefore, our ability to perform at peak levels gets impeded. So what we're after is not chasing balance, but we're chasing presence and appropriateness. We want to be devoting the right amount of time with the right mind space, the right head space, the right attention, the right heart in all the areas of our life. In my book, we talk about nine primary accounts. And in this circle here, you see you're in the center of it. And the reason I put you in the center of it is because I control my thinking. I control my beliefs. I control the decisions I make. Now, we could get into a big theological debate with regards to should I be at the center or should, uh, should it be God in the center? Should it be somebody else in the center? Go with me on the model. Don't listen to agree or disagree. Listen to learn right now. When you jump on a plane every single time, they tell you to put your own oxygen mask on first. How I care for me impacts how I impact every other, every other area of my life. So in the center, I've got you. That's me, all right? The next circle is the circle of being, my spiritual, my intellectual, my physical well-being, and how, I'm, how I am being in all of those areas. Because that impacts the next circle, which is my circle of relating, my marriage, my parenting, my social, 
those key relationships are impacted by the decisions I make, by how I care for myself, and then all impacts my circle of doing, which is my vocation, my avocation, my hobbies, my finances. All of my different life plan accounts are birthed out of these nine major areas. Now, all of us have different life plan accounts, and we put our name by them. For me, my marriage account's my Sherry account, then I've got a family account, but then I have accounts for each one of my kids, and then I've got a ministry account, and I've got a, a, a finance account, I've got a, a, a hobby or a sanity account, I've got a sibling and friend account, I've got all sorts of different accounts because that's, those accounts, for me, are important to me. And by having each and every one of those accounts, I can then begin to define what the target is for each and every one of those accounts. What does success look like for me in all the areas in my life? What does success look like for you in your marriage, in your health, as a parent or a grandparent, as a friend? What does success look like for you and why? And once you invest the time to gain clarity around that, then what you'll start to see is that you have the ability to affect change. So when you, when you have clarity around the target, you cast a vision for every area of your life at some point in the future that is both clear and compelling. Whenever I get to talk about this, I always love to use my, uh, my own life plan, and I like to, to share uh, my marriage account because it is one that I can tell you is a continual focal point for me. So for those of you who are not married, please allow me to just share this. And then in your mind, think about an account that's truly most important for you. If I don't have a clear vision for what I want to see for Sherry and I at the age 75, then chances are I will behave and react today in ways that are dependent upon my emotions and my mood. If I'm tired, if I'm frustrated because I've had a hard day leading the company or something went wrong, then what will happen is I will engage with Sherry out of those emotions. And maybe I'm the only moron that does that. But most of us operate and interact dependent upon how we feel. Once we have a target for the age 75, for the age 80, for the age 50, for the age 30, whatever it may be, a clear and compelling target that paints a picture for how we want to experience life at that point. For Sherry and I at the age of 75, we experience oneness. We are truly one another's best friends. We are intimate and enjoy time with one another. There's nobody we'd rather spend time with other than one another. We look back at our marriage and we celebrate the years of oneness as well as the years of impact because we have poured into other married couples so that they can experience marriages of unity and oneness. When I see that for us at the age 75, now we're married 28 years this July, that magnet for me causes me to be sacrificial and to not act out of emotion but instead act out of what's truly most important because I've given it thought. What's your target for your health? What's your target for your career? What's your target for your little eight-year-old at the age 13? What's your target for your 13-year-old at the age 18? Not what do you want them to do, but who do you want them to become? What's your target for your finances? What's your target for the other areas of your life? What's that clear, compelling vision? What role or purpose do you play in each of those accounts? When you've got clarity around that target and your purpose, then you can start to adjust actions. We are, we're these complex beings. We're beings and doings, but our doings are always birthed out of our beings. So when we're clear on who we are and what areas of our life are most important and what we want to experience, who we want to be at some point in the future, then we can figure out what's most important for us to do today. So if I want to have maximum energy, at the age 75 and be able to surf or snowboard or run hood to coast or play with my grandkids, and that's really important to me, then regardless of whether I feel like it or not, at 12 o'clock I'm going to go for a run. I don't feel like it, but I do it because by doing the right things, it enables me to accumulate net worth in the areas of my life that are most important. So what are those actions that you need to be taking from things you should do to things that become non-negotiable. These are things you do. This is your way. This isn't a decision you need to make each and every day. You build your life plan, you're gonna live forward, you get out of the drift, you make the decision and you manage the decision for the rest of your life. You're proactive in your decision making and what you're putting into your calendar instead of reactive. 
you're taking the right steps to grow net worth, to grow impact, to grow influence, to grow legacy, to define success the way you want to in every area of your life. And by putting together a plan for your life that's 35,000 feet high your entire life versus just 2016, you now have pull power and clarity so that you can fight the drift and you can begin to live forward. Now, for some of you, I know some of you are going, all right, Harkavy, this is what I needed to hear right now because I am stuck in the drift. And others of you are thinking, I, I don't exactly know what he's talking about, but it sounds like it's probably right. If others of you didn't agree, you already hung up. What I'll tell you is, now is the time. This is not something that I want you to put off. Uh, we launched the book in Nashville uh, last Tuesday, so a week ago. We, we broke Amazon by noon, and we had a massive run of books. Uh, we did three, pr three prints of the book in the month of February, all before the book launched March 1st, because we had so much demand. Writing a book with Michael Hyatt, um, may go down as one of the best decisions that I've ever made because the guy is a machine and he's a passionate, passionate student of ours. He's been a client of ours since the early 2000s. And as I was in Tennessee last Tuesday night talking to 3,000 people via simulcast and hundreds in the room, I said, I don't want you all to just read the book. I want you to commit to investing a day. I want you to invest one day to put together a proactive and intentional plan for your life. Don't put it off. If you put it off, chances of you getting stuck in the drift and never coming out are so great. And I want everybody to live with more intentionality. This is like one of the most important things for me. If I could make one significant contribution to humanity, it would be help people to understand that they have more control than they believe and they can make more proactive and intentional decisions than they're aware of. And as a result of that, they can live lives that are filled with more impact, influence, and opportunity. Not just professionally, but in all aspects of your life. As I've had the privilege of walking side by side with leaders over the past two decades, those that are crushing it in business, I see a constant and that constant is these leaders, they're not just crushing it between the hours of 9 to 5. They're crushing it 24-7. The best of the best, they have integrity. They're the same guy or gal all the time. They're living with that intentionality, with that presence, with that desire to serve and make a difference in all areas of their life. You know, they're not going home and giving their leftovers. They're going home with this mindset of, I am now going to be with my best. And as a result of that, when they show up to work, they're completely unencumbered. They're, a, they're able, they have the, confident and the confidence and the courage to take risks, to innovate, to fully go for it at work because they're crushing it in the other areas of their life. It is so important. So I'm going to definitely pitch the heck out of my book, Living Forward, because I think it can change your life. I had uh, the privilege of reading an email last week Tuesday night at the launch from my agent, Brian Norman. And Brian Norman wrote a really nice email to myself and to Michael basically saying, this is the most exciting, the most excited I've ever been about a book project because this book will not only change people's lives today, but this will change generations to come. He said, I can see this book having impact on kids, 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 50 plus years from now. It's evergreen. And he says, and I can say this because it brings confidence and it brings clarity and it helps people to make better decisions. I say this because that's what it's done for me. And I have a box sitting over to my right. It's called my Y file. And on top of my box, I've got a big old photo album. And it's filled with all of these affirming letters, thank you notes from many of you who have been clients of ours at Building Champions over the years. And Many of them say, hey, thank you for helping me to make a few hundred extra thousand bucks or growing my, my career to this level. Many of them say stuff like that. I'm a better leader. I'm a better teammate. Those are awesome. But the ones that truly stoke me are the ones that say that in the first paragraph and then in the second and the third par 
paragraphs talk about how they are living with more intentionality. They have better marriages. They're in the best health, best shape of their life. They're more connected with their kids. They're more connected in their communities. And they're enjoying success in every area of their life as a result of going through the process that I outlined in Living Forward. So I'm going to challenge you. This isn't magic. You know, if you put your life plan together, it's not going to be a surefire way to avoid divorce or a surefire way to avoid a, avoid a heart attack or cancer. It's not a magic lamp. It's not. But what it is is it's a proactive and intentional plan that's impacted me, my family, my team, and thousands and thousands of leaders for the last few decades. And what you do is you review it, you build it, you review it, you adjust it, you schedule to it, you adjust it. You don't serve it, it serves you, and it becomes a tool to help you to make the best decisions so that you can enjoy success in all areas of your life, so that you can be present and intentional in all areas of your life. And I'm confident that if you do this, and you implement it, a year from now, you're going to not only be more successful in business, but you yourself will be more successful in life. So, Living Forward's the book. For people that uh, are interested in buying it today, you can buy it at this site right here. And uh, right now, in this launch month, we're throwing in some neat little bonus uh, opportunities. We've got an audio quick start guide that comes with the book. We've got an action plan guide that comes with the book. And then we have a coloring book. And uh, I tell you what, the, the only, you, you need to hear the story on this. The reason we have a coloring book is we were number one in leadership, number one in self-help. Uh, we were number one in personal business and finance on Amazon a few weeks ago, weeks before the book even came out. We were number four overall, and there were two books that were beating us on Amazon, and both of them were coloring books. So Hyatt's team decided to get creative, and they put together a coloring book. It's pretty cool. So there you go. Um, my hope is that uh, you, you will take action, that you'll read Living Forward, that uh, this is something that you will give to your partners, you'll give to your teammates, you'll give to your high school age kids as well as your parents or for those of you who are going through, uh, heading into retirement. This message is relevant for that huge demographic. What I would love to do is I would love to just take a few minutes um, and field questions uh, should any of you have them. And uh, Dave also definitely give you the opportunity to interact as well. Um, super grateful to be with you. So are there questions for you folks? Well, uh, I'm going to start with wow, which was a quote that just came in from John uh, Fortier. So John, uh, I'm with you. What an amazing 40-minute uh, presentation, Daniel. Uh, Thank you. The stories, stories were amazing. I mean, you know, you definitely connected with me in a, in a personal way, and I just have to think, other people on this call listening in, you know, it, it just felt like you were talking to me. Like, did you build this presentation to, you know, connect with me personally? Uh, so, uh, anyways, really appreciate the leadership, brother. Uh, so, folks, would love to field a couple questions. I oh wow, they're they're starting to roll. Um, although most of them are just like awesome stuff. Wow, um, you know, kind of Kevin laughing out loud. He felt like you were connecting with him too. Um, so, Daniel, I haven't got questions yet, although folks start posting questions. But, you know, what really hit me and one of the things that I've always struggled with is just presence, you know. And, you know, sometimes I have a presence challenge in a sales call. Obviously, you know, with family and kids, you know, um, presence is something that, you know, is just a constant struggle for me personally. And I know in the ADD world that we live in, I think it's something we all struggle with. Would you mind sharing, you know, some some just tactics, some process, some things that might kind of help us just focus on presence? Would yeah. you mind speaking to that for a few minutes, and I'll look for some questions. Man, I'd love to, and I think it's a really great question. And I know that there's all sorts of people that are going, "Amen, David." Yeah, we need to improve on this. Uh, I'll tell you, in some of my most meaningful CEO work with with exec level clients of big organizations, this is one of the greatest challenges. So everybody write this down. The number one way I show you I care about you is by how I listen to you. The number one way I show you how I care about you is how I listen to you. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. 
Now you think about that as a leader. When you walk into your office and you walk by on such a mission, you walk by all of the, the assets on your, in your business, your teammates. When you're in a meeting and somebody's talking and you're looking at your iPhone or you're looking at your computer, when you're thinking about something else, when you're having a conversation with somebody and there's seven people behind that person and you're waving to them and not listening to the person speaking to you, all on the professional side, now let's bring it home. When your wife or your husband's talking to you about the challenge of their day, when your little 13-year-old's talking about a really big event that took place on the playground that day, and you're distracted because you're checking the status of people that you haven't seen in 20 years, how do you fight the distraction? Number one way I show you I care about you is how I listen to you. You have to understand that truth. Then when you build your life plan and you've got a clear, compelling vision for every area of your life, you start to be very aware of how important all these conversations are, all these engagements. And you start to say no to some that are not as important so that you can be more present in those that you are. Active listening is something that everybody should study. Active listening is listening at such a deep level to where you are really trying to not just understand what's being said, but the meaning behind what's being said. So you're repeating back in your own words to make sure you're staying engaged. When you're in your one-on-ones, whether it's a partner planning meeting or whether it's a one-on-one -on -one with one of your direct reports, have a journal out and take notes so that you're not distracted. Take notes so that you can, you can come back and recap the high points. I can tell you that this company, we've got some of the biggest deals that we've received because I've practiced this active listening in ways that have caused the prospective buyer. I'm thinking about one firm, Dave, in, in the UK years ago. They were interviewing a whole bunch of different people to come in and work with their executive team. And this was a company owned by Shell and ExxonMobil. It's a joint venture in Finium. I've talked about them before. Fantastic company out of the UK. And the only reason I got the job was when they were interviewing me versus six or seven other thought leaders or coaches that were going to come in and do this work, I listened at such a level to where I said, okay, I've heard you, and as a result of hearing you, I'm hearing you say these three things are most important. One, two, and three. Do I have it right? And the gal on the other end said, I've never been listened to like that. That was amazing. That is absolutely right. And I got the deal, and that deal has led to years worth of business with this firm. How you listen, take notes, practice active listening, repeat back. Um, now in the marriage account, if I were to share with you one of the things from my Sherry account is the last 30 minutes are the most important 30 minutes of the day. I connect with Sherry asking about her day. I encourage, accept, respect, honor, and support her. I do this by spending the last 30 minutes eye to eye, ear to ear, no magazine, no iPhone, no interruptions, eye to eye, ear to ear. I have to be mindful of that so that I can truly listen to the only one that I've made it a commitment to for life. So fight to be present. Those are a few tips and uh, hopefully they help. Any question, Any other questions, Dave? Yeah, the questions have uh, blown up, so we're not going to get to them all, but uh, here's a question. Um, how do you stay in the zone when you have so much on your plate? So that's living forward. Um, <laughs> that, like, right now, I'm going to tell you truthfully. If you, if you, if any of you had been with me for the last seven weeks, you might think, "Uh oh, he's a way overcommitted." But what I do is I say no to really good things, so that even in the midst of the chaos, because of my life plan, I say yes to great things. So there's been a lot of travel over the last seven weeks uh, with regards to the book, and then with regards to corporate engagements. But you, you have courage, like I talked about. You have clarity, like I talked about. So you do things that are not conventional. You bring your family, if you can, with you somewhere. Um, you say no to good things. You know what you do? Okay, here's a really good truth for everybody. Get comfortable with letting people down. At the end of the day, you need to know you're going to disappoint some people. I'm sorry, and you know, we can get into a big debate on this, and I've worked with countless leaders on this. There's no way for me to answer every single tweet, to answer every single interaction on Facebook, for me to answer every single comment on Instagram, for me to be engaged with LinkedIn, LinkedIn, both email accounts, my team, and our customers, and then my wife and my kids and our community. 
at the end of the day, I'm going to let somebody down. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm letting the right people down and not letting the wrong people down. So one of the things that I do in the living forward process is I have you, have you write out your eulogy as if you were to die today. I want you to understand the power of the front row. The people sitting in the front row of your memorial service are the people that are going to fill the biggest void. Get real clear on who you're going to let down. Get real clear on who you're going to honor. And you need to begin with the end in mind, writing out your eulogy, writing out legacy statements. It helps, and I walk you through the how-to in living forward. Well, Daniel, this has been a fantastic call. I want to remind everybody that if you go to buildingchampions.com forward slash MC, which we have put a link in chat for go to meeting, as well as the slides for today, uh, we also put a link into our Facebook page on this. You're going you're gonna to get some great bonus material in addition to Daniel's book. Uh, I encourage everybody to forward the recording of this to realtors, to partners, to people that you think would connect with this, mag this message and be grateful for it. Uh, so let's let's not just let the recording of this uh, be something that we we go back, we skim through it, we watch while we're multitasking. You know, let's really connect with this message because it's only as valuable as the presence that we give it and the people who we share it with. Um, as we close the call, Daniel, I'm going to close with a question to help drive the mortgage coach mission. You know, our mission is that every time a mortgage coach professional meets with a family who's looking to make mortgage options they deliver a total cost analysis. You know, whether that's in their office, you know, this is a great loan officer, Jay Crowell in the Seattle market, meeting with a family. You know, this is a, a great mortgage coach professional, Wally Elderby in, in Texas, you know, meeting with someone, sharing options, or whether it's a family that's just seeing that option, they're kind of going through it in their own pace, in their own way. You know, Daniel, that's my goal and my mission is to get mortgage coach professionals doing this. Any, any wisdom or insight, you know, as we close up this call, something so tactical, you know, I mean, this is not their why, but it's just learning a new piece of technology. Any one minute quick hit that you could provide that, that might get folks to, to say, hey, I've got this habit, I know I should have it, but I'm not doing it all the time. Anything you want to close the call with there? Yeah, so three really quick points. Number one, your vision for you as an originator, um, you need to see who you're going to become in 2020. And if you don't see that you are going to be the most proficient, most well-respected, most professional in the industry, um, then I'm going to challenge you to gain some clarity around what you see for yourself in 2020. And i got to tell you, once you see that, then you now have the courage and the conviction to start investing the hours to learn how to apply this with mastery. You need to learn how to apply this technology so that it becomes second nature. And it's going to require you to invest a couple hours a week. You block those on-time hours until you are so proficient at it that you just have absolute confidence. The third thing is you start today. Even if you kind of fumble through it today, once you get to that outcome, your customer is going to be better served as a result of it. But you need to start. And I have said this in my last book. I said every day you've got to make your palms sweat. If you don't knock the fence that you've placed around you to preserve what, who you are today so you can just maintain your business. If you don't knock that fence down and take new risks, learn new technology, learn new things, and if you don't stay on the cutting edge, on the balls of your feet instead of the hills of your feet, you're going to begin to decay as a professional and as a person. So I'm going to tell you, vision for you at 2020 better be compelling and you better see yourself as the most competent, knowledgeable consultant out there. Invest the hours, step two. Invest the hours to truly become a master. That's number two. And number three, begin today. Start using it today. You'll learn it quickly. I love it. I love it. So, folks, take action. Uh, tomorrow, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we're dedicated to providing a, it's just a small workshop. It's very interactive, teaching mortgage professionals how to use their mobile devices as teaching tools and sales tools, you know, using our apps. So make sure you come to our trainings. Hopefully it was a valuable call. Uh, remember to go to our calendar, keep up to date on what's next. Next week we've got two amazing guests, and Daniel Harkavy, uh, I'm grateful. Um, thanks for bringing this message to the Mortgage Coach community. I hope everybody on the call will take Daniel up and uh, buy his book, read his book, share his book, buy it for your partners, give it to as many people as possible. Thank you very much, Daniel. And then as we wrap up today's call, 
Uh, please let us know what you thought of today's call. Um, I just pushed the um, survey, so let us know what you thought of today's message. And uh, if you're a guest on this call and you want to learn more about Mortgage Coach, click the last option. So, Daniel, have an awesome day, and thanks again for bringing all this value today. Dave, thanks for having me on. I hope uh, the value is added. And, folks, if, uh, if you would, I would love to, to know your thoughts as well on Facebook or uh, on, on Twitter. That would be fantastic. All right. Thanks for having me, Dave. Let's, let's connect soon. All right. Take care, everybody. See you next week. Hope to see some of you tomorrow on the, the mobile training. Bye now.